So here's an update on the back of the cabinet. I figured I would attack the nastiest part first. And it's pretty rewarding. As you can see, everything cleaned up pretty good. Basically took everything off the boards, stripped it down, cleaned them up, took the main board off here, this board, removed it, cleaned the rest of the cabinet. Still a little dirt in some tight spots, but uh, the original color of the cabinet came back strong. It all came out pretty nice. Uh, pulled the transformer off, just tested the voltages on the outputs. Those are all good. I have not replaced the fuse block yet, but I will be doing that. All the connections on the back of the boards, they all looked good, nice and clean. The voltage coming in, or uh, going out on this switch mode power supply is all good. All the wiring, it's nice to be able to see the colors. It is very, very helpful. All the connectors were taken apart, plugged back in. All the wiring cleaned up. <clears throat> Things repositioned. The pedal assembly, I haven't touched yet. That's going to be coming out probably next. We'll strip that down. You can see how rough that is, and somebody's just slobbered grease on it and stuff. So we'll strip that out. I basically didn't uh, remove any sub-assemblies, but all of your main cabinet wiring is all now in good shape. The sides came out very very nice again haven't taken off the monitor at all I've done anything with the chassis or chassis ribbon cable is a little bit uh, kind of stained you can see it's a little bit nicer there but it has good connections and uh, the game is working appropriately. One thing to note when you are cleaning cabinets that are just filthy and you're getting in there with a vacuum, you want to avoid vacuuming the CPU. And the best way to clean these with the amount of debris that's usually on them is canned air. And then remove all of your connectors, check them, and plug them back in. I found these nice little clips. These were at the bottom of the cabinet. Retainer clips. But the reason for the avoiding of uh, the vacuuming is static electricity. And on some CPUs, it can become a problem. And you can get errors that typically wouldn't happen and then you're really spending time tracking down an oddball issue so in my experience it's best just to avoid everything that you can and don't make any problems that aren't already there so that's an update as far as the cabinet is concerned the inside and i'm about to attack the outside Stay tuned. So after removing the control panel and the bezel, you can see that there has been a little bit of uh, cabinet damage. And basically, see where this is all flush like it should be. And you have your groove where your bezel sits. This whole bottom part is what is holding the bottom mounts uh, supporting the monitor. 
and you can tell that basically the farther you go to the right side this gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the reason being is because these screws which you can see some of them are rusty as hell it's an old machine um, they have lost their ability to keep this uh, bracket up and you can see this movement here that movement is not good okay because again on the back side of here you have the bottom monitor brackets you can see the gap there so if we slide to the back of the cabinet you can see this is that same shelf and you got your two bottom monitor brackets right there top ones up there and again this on the front side on the back side rather is uh, perfectly stable but on the front obviously those uh, screws have stripped out so I'm thinking the simple fix which isn't necessarily the best fix but um, the simple fix is to take another stabilizing block like you see here and here and basically mount that right here with this being pushed up in place just like that with that being pushed up in place and that being mounted nice and tight um, I know that this shelf is not going to go anywhere because there is a significant lip right here I can even set some glue in there as well some wood glue but again over here on this side uh, you get a little tiny movement not much um, but I'm going to do the same thing on that side it only makes sense put a little piece right here I'm thinking again like a one by one and just get this whole thing shifted up so that it goes tight like that stay tuned all right so we have installed the braces on both sides and this is way more stable now I've actually I pulled the um, the wood bezel that holds the tinted glass but you can basically see where this is now touching right here which it was not and there's basically no give there so that's nice and tight as is this side I did notice that uh, this brace here was very very loose which is again what holds the uh, left hand side of the bezel up so I'm going to re-staple that in uh, or screw it in and get that solid. So these came out pretty nice. Just cut what I had on hand, but they do not obstruct the rest of the control panel. It's still able to slide in and lock appropriately. And I also glued them in there on both sides uh, for good measure. More to come. All right, so right now we have the control panel taken off and we are just gonna go over it briefly to show you some work that's gonna need to be done. This is the gear assembly for the shifter and uh, it's all gunked up. You can see that people have just smothered grease here and there. You got a lot of uh, debris and it's very sticky. The switch looks rough. You, know, you got your actuator right down in here. I'll probably replace that whole switch. Hear that hesitation? And that hesitation can cause uh, difficulties there as far as shifting. Um, very least, I will clean the hell out of that. 
And then you've got each one of your little gauges, your assemblies, and these use a simple remote PCB with the back mounted bulb. And that just, that whole socket assembly uh, twists right out and we'll replace those bulbs. We'll clean inside the, uh, around the assembly. Same thing over here with this one. And then we have our remote board here, not a remote board, our optic board. And so I've already pulled apart uh, the part of the optic assembly. So this is the wheel, which basically will uh, ride on top of this. Oops, losing focus here. Right on top of this, and it slides in between these grooves right here. And as you spin the wheel, you get uh, changes that send signals along the axis. And that's how it determines if you're spinning the wheel left or right and to what extent. So that board is actually in really nice shape. I'm going to clean up the uh, optic sensors themselves, which are infrared. And then the other thing that is the main part is your gear assembly for your steering wheel. So we will remove this uh, gear here that actually looks in very good shape. There's no missing teeth, which is always nice. Um, these frequently go bad on OutRun, but the OutRun had the shaker, so that uh, caused issues. And then you've got your other gear right here. So we'll disassemble all of this, clean it up, bring it back, and uh, we'll give you a full run down the control panel once it is reassembled and cleaned up. Stay tuned. All right, so to give you a quick update here, uh, we have basically completely removed the steering wheel assembly. Um, we have some of that in here. You're looking at cleaned up gears. Um, we already talked about the optic gear. This is just the shield. And here is a piece that's another assembly that basically sits right over here like that actually no it sits like this and uh, the black gear here that spins and again goes through the optic sensor so this is all cleaned up it's spinning nice and easy now nice and smooth that was gunked up big time then we have completely removed and disassembled this bad boy, which is the housing for the steering wheel shaft. And uh, you have some of the pieces that are in here and the rest of it right here. So you can see that's super nasty and cruddy. Um, I'll have to look at that closely. If there's any rust, or any significant pitting, um, basically anything that I think is going to obstruct the free movement of it and kind of bind, um, I'm going to address. And then we'll re-grease everything. And you can see how rough the, uh, the chrome is on the steering wheel. This is the original steering wheel though. So I'm going to clean this up to the best of my ability. The actual rubber will clean up nicely. You can see little cigarette burns right through here, but the uh, rubber itself isn't in terrible condition. And uh, once it gets cleaned up and you put some rubber treatment on it, it'll look nice. Love that Sega emblem. So all that rust there, we basically were, are going to polish that off or scrub it off and then see if we can't get uh, some nice like Meguiar's chrome polish and utilize that and then we'll reassemble this and you can see again they had it gunked up pretty good this is all cruddy it's got to be addressed we'll disassemble this uh, the little barrel part that's already been cleaned on the outside it looks decent and then we'll reassemble it and basically head on to the shifter 
but everything else is actually looking pretty nice. I now have access uh, to that gunky part right there. So the uh, entire black or uh, plastic housing for the control panel, um, I will probably remove and uh, just I'll have better access for cleaning and such. But all the gauges, you know, they're not cracked. They look nice. The start button looks nice. All that is coming together pretty nice. So it's got the original wood shifter, high and low. So that's nice. And it's coming along pretty decent. It's just going to take a little bit more time because the assemblies are quite dirty. More coming. All right, a quick update here for you. The control panel is now done. We have completely disassembled basically the entire thing from the gauges and uh, cleaned them up. We replaced the bulbs that go in behind them, the start button, uh, your gears, and your optic sensor. Those have all been cleaned up. Just a little bit of lithium grease there. And those were pretty nasty. We also pulled off the whole shaft assembly uh, for the steering wheel, clean that up. This actually is quite smooth now. I will try to demonstrate basically just by turning the uh, control panel because it's sitting on the steering wheel right now. But you can see how it doesn't make a sound and it is as smooth as butter. So that's nice. And then we moved on again. This other gauge got taken care of as well. Same thing. Then we had the shifter assembly, which, if you remember, was absolutely filthy. The switch was disgusting. The spring inside it was disgusting. The ball bearing was, it wouldn't even roll. It was just grinding. There was so much dirt. Um, of course, this is now just as smooth as can be. You can see it actuating nice and smooth. I mean, I'm just barely moving this and it just goes with ease. You can see I installed two spacers there because this was actually, it's got a little bit of play in it. Now I don't know if it just came from the factory that way, um, but a little side to side play, you can see it moving there. And uh, it's only held on really by the, the little, the bearing itself that's uh, spring loaded. And that's basically there's two positions. You have a high and a low position and that's on the underside of here. Um, actually, you can see it right there. And then there's a smaller ball, ball bearing on this side that's supposed to put enough tension where it's probably sitting more even like this. But unfortunately, over the last, you know, 35 years, it has worn and uh, it doesn't sit flush anymore. But there is still an air gap and you're not grinding on it anymore with the addition of these plastic or nylon spacers. Uh, and it is, it is quiet. It's actuating smoothly. The switch was cleaned up and reused, sprayed with some contact cleaner. Um, it's got nice movement. There's no gumminess. And the, the whole assembly actually turned out really, really clean. And uh, the shaft, well, you'll see it when I flip it over, um, that turned out really, really nice. I was surprised because that was super rusty. You'll be able to see that from the other picks. You got the front side here. So that is the back side. I just got to put on this cover. I wanted to leave it off to be able to show you this. Again. Man, isn't that so sweet. So again, that's what uh, sliding in between that optic sensor is what determines the axis left and right. Okay. And we'll flip this over gently. Let's see if I can do it gently. And I want to have it positioned 
So it's standing on the legs, which it does pretty decently. Just make sure it's not sitting on anything. It is not, it's just on the uh, outside legs here. Actually, I'd be able to show you this again. Steering wheel turning. And you can see how perfect that has to be. It is a very, very small uh, area that it has to slide through. It's got to be a straight plate. And then you have basically the final result. The steering wheel, um, the chrome on it, had a lot of rust. And we used navel jelly to remove the rust. And it made it shine back, but this is all pitting, unfortunately. And I think I might spend a little bit more time uh, kind of smoothing it out, buffing it out. But uh, the pitting is permanent. So, and I think I have uh, another steering wheel that I might try to switch over. I do love the Sega emblem here. So awesome. And this is actually like a, almost like a cast iron emblem. So that's pretty cool. And we cleaned up the steering wheel leather, uh, which actually turned out pretty nice. It's got gouges out of it and stuff, but man, it feels good. It's solid. It's a nice grip. Um, and we used it with just regular leather conditioning. You got your start button, like I said, we cleaned that up. Got that looking nice. The gauges, they all came out great. And then the shifter assembly from up top. Again, you can see that chrome turned out really, really nice. Or steel, it's a little bit of both here. I don't want to tip it. But there, you get to see. I mean, this was so, so, so rusty. And it came out pretty nice. So overall, the finished product looks pretty damn good. I was really, really surprised at how the cowl came back jet black. I mean, it, it looks sharp. It's a nice, nice looking control panel. Me. Position it down a little bit so you can see. There she is. So I think next we will be doing the pedal assembly. Stay tuned. All right, so we have got the control panel back on the game, and uh, it is looking pretty good. Actually, functions really, really well. Um, I have been blown away at how smooth this game is now. Um, we also had the one light assembly in the gauge that works. This one I have got to figure out. Um, it's either a bad bulb that we replaced, or it's just not getting the proper connection, or there's a broken trace or whatnot. So we will look into that. The shifter is magnificently smooth. I mean, it is just butter. So that's working great. Um, on top of that, again, like I said, the steering is just silky, silky smooth. You don't hear anything from it. And it is, I mean, it really, really works nicely. Um, me and my son were testing it out and we are pretty impressed. It, it makes for a much more enjoyable game. But the overall look of the control panel is uh, is very, very sharp. And we started to clean up the bezel area of the game, and that's starting to come to life. We still have some other things to do. We did dial in the monitor. That actually looks pretty nice. Um, still a little bit of fine tuning, but we're pretty happy with what we got going on right now. So in the back, we will replace, uh, I've got to get the socket holders for the three bulbs or two bulbs that are back here. I think there's three. And then you will also see up here, there will be three. So this will be lit. This will be lit. Um, of course, you have the top five high scores and kind of the pinball format um, as far as lighting. That's pretty neat. 
and uh, and of course we have our turbo, which looks really really nice. So overall, the cabinet is coming together nicely. We've lit up the coin door lights. Still got to clean up. Like I said, I haven't touched the pedal assembly. That is pretty rough, and it's cold outside right now. But I would prefer to take this whole thing apart, clean it good, and then give it a nice paint job, put a sealer on it or whatnot. Um, the bottom, this is in really good shape. It will clean up very, very nicely. We did a little bit of cleaning to it, but just fine tuning. And uh, your coin box, again, this should clean up nicely. Coin door, we'll disassemble this. We just wanted to get it together get it working. Your subwoofer, that, actually that shield uh, or screen looks nice. And your switches, they're all original. We'll pull apart, apart that uh, little control panel and clean that up. But it's coming along. It's looking nice, and the game, like I said, it's extremely enjoyable to play. The slight bar that you see scrolling across the screen is only in the video. You don't see that uh, in person. It's only the camcorder that's picking it up. So much more to come, but well, we're getting there. It's playable. Alright, so in a little bit of uh, troubleshooting, I have found out why we weren't able to get the two lights up here and two lights down here uh, working. We did get the other light on the dashboard um, and the control panel to light up. So if you come back here, basically I have removed the uh, PCB, the light board. And this also has your uh, your displays, your top five score displays on the back. Um, and basically these parts right here were uh, soldered together. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get it all situated. So that would sit like this. And at some point there was some cabot damage or somebody had cut some wires because you can see they have taken your ground and power wire which I'm guessing is you know 6.3 volts um, AC and they have just spliced it to this super thick wire um, and then they just taped them off and they actually they didn't even solder them they just twisted them together so those these two leads right here would connect to right here, one and two on this board. And that would feed power, and then of course they just piggybacked it over to the one and two on the other. That would light the display for the top five and the high score. Um, so at some point those must have peeled off. and. They replaced it at one point, got it working, and then it, when it fell off, they just decided, forget about it, and they taped the lead. So I'm going to pull this wire, because it's definitely, it's terribly done, and we're going to replace it. We're going to clean up uh, the shields, that little plexi, and then we'll rewire it to the displays, and we should have light. Stay tuned. All right, so we have got the bulbs working, at least the board itself. Uh, we currently are missing um, three of the sockets. One of them is broke, two were missing, and we just have the one that has the score lit currently. That's missing, and the uh, two in the best five or top five scores are also missing, but you can see that one is lit. Uh, the other ones will be as well. It's a little bit bright. I might do something like a frosted bulb there. It's just a normal 555 wedge base 
pole. But you can see that's lit. I'll show you what I did in the back. I did add on to the uh, design a little bit just to make it easier for future swaps and cleaning and stuff like that. So basically we had our, the wiring was completely removed. Um, that was, that they had kind of jerry-rigged on there. They didn't solder anything on, they just twisted it and then they taped them off. I mean, it was really bad. So you can see, again, the one bolt here that's functioning. And basically, I just soldered on two fresh leads and you can see that those brown stripe and then the brown wire, they run up to the top bolts. Run down here, and we soldered the two leads these and they come down to a pair of uh, quick disconnects and then I just matched them up and it's perfect you can swap those out you can you can uh, unplug it and then unplug the ribbon cable and remove the entire unit without having to uh, take off the actual light fixtures so that's nice because these I did take them out to clean them and they are a bit of a pain in the ass. So uh, again, we'll probably swap the bulb as far as what it is. I think it's a little too bright. And, uh, but it is working now, and I think it looks pretty good. All right, so I have gotten around to removing the pedal assembly in the Sega Turbo, which there is just the accelerator, the gas pedal, and it's a very simple assembly. There's not much to it, um, but it is efficient and it cleaned up pretty well. It wasn't super, super nasty. Uh, there, people had sprayed some lubricating uh, kind of gel on there and that had gunked it up quite a bit. So that got cleaned up and then the uh, Optos, they got cleaned up significantly as well. So you can see, again, it's this, the whole unit is simply this bar, which attaches to the pedal, and this will be on the inside of the cabinet, this, this whole portion, this is sticking on the outside of the cabinet. Uh, your pedal assembly, or pedal sticks to here, and you pull down on it, or push down on it with your foot, and that you get your pressure from that spring, and what takes place is this steel gate changes states as it rotates through. And you can see there's these little windows um, on the gate itself. So you have that open part here, and you can see that open part there. And as it sits right now, this would be considered full brake. So you can see the one set of optos uh, is not, there isn't really an open window, and then this set it's not an open window either. So that represents uh, full brake. And as you push down on the pedal, things open up. All of a sudden you're looking at open, the beam is able to uh, receive and emit on both of the optos. So that's a second state, which would be like a mid state of acceleration. And then pushing all the way through you have one of the uh, optos that is now blocked and the other one is fully open and that is your full state of acceleration. And there may be another mid state uh, in there as well, but you do have that ability to accelerate uh, more than just digitally either on or off. This is you know, closer to an analog setup. But again, it all runs through the harness which connects up through into the PCB. There's your main PCB board for it and your individual opto PCBs, one for each set. So again, very, very simple setup, cleaned up nice, and we're about to reinstall. Stay tuned for more. So here is our Sega Turbo. 100% cleaned up, working perfectly. And we figured we would do a quick rundown of the work that we did and the results that we got from it.
as you can see, the lights on the dash are working. Our steering wheel is all shined up. Our shifter is looking nice. We have all of the LED displays working appropriately, along with the lights to display the best five and your current score. And we have the marquee bulb working properly as well. We've got a nice clear picture, bright colors. Uh, this monitor is in fantastic shape and uh, it really, really dialed in nicely. Now this is the oddball 18 inch monitor, 17 or 18. It's not a 19 or 20. Uh, I think most of them were the 20 inch. So this is the smaller monitor. And you can usually tell that because this part uh, right here is usually over here. And then on top, Sega has been put above turbo where normally it's over here on the left. But uh, this is pretty unique. There's not a lot of these out there with this monitor size and this bezel. So I was glad to get this one cleaned up and working appropriately. Shifter has nice smooth action. You don't hear any grinding. You know, this spins appropriately. This was actually seized before. You just hear that tiny little click, which is the ball bearing pushing into its home position. So it's working exactly like you hoped it would. There's our oil gauge. Our vacuum gauge. Of course, these are just dummy gauges. They don't actually move, uh, but they do light up and they provide a little bit of omniance there. Um, in the cockpit version, these actually do move, if I'm not mistaken. So that's kind of cool. We have the original start button, which on a lot of these has been swapped out. The steering wheel, the actual leather part of it, uh, that came out pretty good. When we first got this machine, uh, this was basically a gray color. And I mean, it was just dirty beyond belief. This, all the chrome was just 100% rust. Um, you can still see all the pitting from the rust. And I thought about doing more with it, but I said, you, you risk the uh, chance of taking off a lot of this chrome if you're gonna do more with it. And the way that it sits right now, uh, for 1981, it doesn't look horrible. So we left that. Coin door lights are working. There is a few things that uh, we probably will do when we get some warmer weather and uh, they involve painting. So one of them would be pulling this coin door and stripping these pieces, painting it a nice black and then reassembling. And the same thing with our pedal here. So although the pedal assembly was completely uh, removed and refurbished, of course we can't do painting in 10 degree weather. So that's gotta hold off. Unfortunately, that's one of the uh, sore spots as far as the cabinet is concerned. Also the lower coin door, you can see it's been scuffed at some point and I couldn't get it to shine back up. So it's gonna need painting as well. The chrome on the bottom actually came out pretty good. This will clean up even better with a little polish, but it all cleaned up nice. So the front end, uh, it looks super, super sharp. Again, 1981. Hard to ask for much more. Of course, you get the really, really cool T molding, which they don't make this anymore. So I'm glad that I had the original and it was in very nice shape and was able to clean up very nicely. Huge sub right here that really adds to the gameplay. Our side art, it cleaned up very nice. A lot of the nicotine stains we were able to get out. 
the scuffs, the bruises, they all cleaned up pretty well. I was debating addressing this when it gets a little bit warmer. Pulling this, reassembling, and then uh, doing some painting. Probably could do the touch up indoors, but on the bottom here, we have some of the laminate that's kind of flaking off, actually the wood that's flaking off. And what I'll probably end up doing is cutting this out, uh, putting some Bondo down there, sanding it, and then painting it white, and then redoing that line. So that was a larger job with the sanding and the Bondo that I wanted to tackle again indoors. So I refrain from doing that. At the same time, you could touch up small parts down here. Very minor wear though. Again, for 1981, it's in extremely nice condition. Slide on over to the other side, and we're not disappointed. Some small scuffs, but again, full side art, not faded, nice and bright white, no nicotine stains. I mean, it really is a sharp looking machine. I love the cabin style on this. Head over to the back. Slide this out for a second. And we've got our board here. And the only thing that we had to do with the boards was shine up a lot of the male pins on these connectors and then reseat a lot of the, uh, all of the ribbon cables. We did take out the second board and we um, re-socketed some of the chips, but it was a clean stack to begin with. And uh, most of it was just dialing in the monitor and getting a, a solid voltage coming from our power supply, which we did clean up significantly so if you remember this was an absolute nightmare when we first started I mean this was really really dirty um, the power supply was not dialed in correctly we had bad voltages uh, intermittent connections and so we basically stripped everything um, did some fresh solder points on our fuse blocks and everything came out nice and clean. And we kept our wiring harness as clean as we could. Of course, there's a big speaker. There's two more on the top by the marquee. And we did our quick disconnects right here to fix our LED board, which wasn't functioning. So that's now uh, working appropriately. We fixed our ground that was missing on the control panel. That's working appropriately. And there's our pedal assembly, which we stripped and cleaned all up. And of course we did the same thing with the steering column. So back of the cabinet really came out nice and uh, it really looks pretty sharp. The fan we also fixed. This was super, super loud. At one point I just disconnected it and then we tore apart the fan and just cleaned it up and put some oil in it, lubed it up, and now it's pretty quiet. So we do have the original coin door, or not coin door, back door. That's in decent shape. I always thought this was nice too. All the original paperwork. Original checkoff list from the manufacturing company.
one of the cool things that I did come across when I was uh, fixing the pedal assembly is the fact that it has uh, multiple intervals. It's more of a analog pedal assembly than I had originally anticipated. A lot of these old games are, you know, you're simply off or on. And it's not the case with this, actually. It goes from off, which is your foot off of the pedal, and uh, that is basically brake. And then you go a little bit on, and that's low. You go a little more, that's medium, and then a little more, and that's high. So it, uh, after finding that out and looking at the schematics, you were able to really play the game uh, much more precise when you get into tight situations. So I plan on doing a gameplay video of uh, Sega Turbo in the next coming weeks, so look for that. But this is the game, and it cleaned up super, super nice. This will be a good one for the arcade. Check us out on Instagram and YouTube if you haven't already. Arcade Resurrection, coming back at you.